Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. Welcome to another C++ for Complete Beginners tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the if statement in C++. Uh, and this is a very exciting point to have reached because finally we can begin to make our programs interactive. So I've got a basic C++ program here. And uh, to illustrate the use of if, I'm going to create a little program that asks the user to enter a password and checks if that password is correct or not. First of all, let's declare a string and um, let's call this password. And I'm going to set that equal to some password that the user is supposed to enter. Let's just put hello, although of course you should never use that as an actual password in real life. Now I'm going to get some input from the user and, and first I want to prompt the user to enter their password. So I'm going to say here, see out. And the, uh, uh, this is, I, I often call this just a chevron because it looks like a chevron, but it's actually the insertion operator, which is often called put to for short. So I'm going to um, start calling this put to from now on. So I'm going to type put, see out, put to space. And uh, let's say here, enter your password. And I'll just put um, like a little, sort of angle bracket thing within the string here just to make the make it look a bit more like a sort of prompt. Let's have a space after that as well. And then let's output flush. Then I'm going to get the user input with C in. So let's say C in and I'm going to type the um, extraction operator also known as get from. Um, so C in get from and, and, and now I need a string in which to store the input that the user enters. And best practice in C++ is that you should declare your variables uh, pretty much as close as you can to where they are actually used. So let's type string input here. So this is where I'm going to use this to store my user input and I'm declaring it really close to where I'm using it. Um, in, the, in the early days of computer programming and for a long time afterwards, uh, variables were always declared at the top of the program, the thinking being that you could see what variables your particular file used, but that's uh, no longer a, a good idea um, because that the structure of programs has, has changed a lot these days um, and, and for other reasons. So you should declare them as close as you can to where you use them now. So let's, let's type C in input. And um, firstly, let's, let's just see what, what, how that, what that actually looks like. I'm going to do something which uh, I, hi I highly recommend that you do frequently in your program. I'm just going to type C out and um, I'm going to output that actual um, value that we've got like this. So let's put input endler. And I'm also going to, I want like a couple of single quotes around this just so I, I can see there's nothing no like space characters on the beginning or end uh, or anything like that. So let's put here within double quotes, I can use a single quote like that. So I'm just going to output a single quote before I'm outputting the stuff that the user entered. And I also want to output another single quote afterwards. So that's going to look like this. And I, I need my um, another put to just there. Okay, so let, let's run this program before we go any further. So it says enter your password and I'll, I'll just click in the console and enter um, let me in. Hit return and we can see this is what the user entered and these single quotes um, just enable us to see that there really is nothing on the start or the end of the string. So I'd recommend like when you write a computer program, um, always try to check every step, excuse me, um, if there's anything that you're not completely sure about, um, use C out to output some uh, some of the stuff that's entered or, or the results of calculations that you've done in your program, and check that it is what you expect. And if you if you build up programs step by step like this, uh, creating a step, outputting any the values of any variables that you're not totally sure about before pr proceeding to the next step, and uh, you know run your program at each step then it, it really helps you uh, to develop programs a lot more rapidly um, because you don't end up with a massive pile of code that doesn't work and you don't know why. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to check to see if this input, uh, we, can, we can get rid of this, and I want to check to see if the input matches this password here. 
And to do that, I'm going to use an if statement, uh, a conditional statement in C++. We're going to have a lot of fun with this in the future, doing uh, a lot of different things with it. It's extremely useful, one of the basic building blocks of um, computer programs. And it looks like this. And it follows um, a pattern that you often see in C++ in general and in many programming languages. That is, we have a keyword like this, if in this case. And following that, we have two round brackets, open and close, and we're going to put stuff in those round brackets. And following that, we have an open and close curly bracket, like these. So we put the code that we want to run if the condition is met between these two brackets. And uh, we're going to put a condition between the round brackets after the if keyword. And notice that's a very similar pattern to the whole main um, function here. Uh, we have this uh, extra thing here. We have have the what we call a return type of this function. But then we have, um, well, in this case, it's not a keyword. Uh, it's um, a special function name, main, but it, it looks pretty like this. And following main, we have two round brackets, and we have these open and closing curly brackets, which have uh, code in them, and it's, it's a similar pattern here. So what do we put in if? In if, we're going to say we want to compare this input. Let's type the input here, input. Compare the contents of this variable with the contents of this variable here. And um, to do that, I'm going to type equals equals password here. So this is this whole thing is checking if these two things are equal. Why is it two equal signs instead of one? Well, it's because this, these two equal signs have a different meaning to this equal sign. This equal sign is taking this value and assigning it to this variable, this string. This equals equals, the, two, the double equal sign, are checking if these two things are equal. So one is assigning a value, storing a value, and um, this is checking a value, so there are two different things semantically in terms of meaning and that's why they are a different symbol. So this, this whole thing here is called a condition and this is going to evaluate to true, like a boolean true value, if these two things match and if they don't match it's going to evaluate to false. So whatever you put in the, in the condition here for if, it has to ultimately always evaluate to true or false. Um, so in here we can put some code that's going to be executed between these two brackets if this evaluates to true, in other words, if the two things are identical. So I'm going to type here cout and um, password accepted. And let's just put a endler there. Now if the password isn't accepted, then um, if the, if the password doesn't match this, I want to take some, some kind of different action. Let's have another if down here. Let's type if. So we have the round brackets and then the curly brackets. And in here I'm going to type input not equal to password. So to, to get um, a test for um, non-equality in C++, you use this exclamation mark, which you, um, which you read as not. So this is not equals, um, exclamation mark equals. So I'm saying if the input is not equal to the password, then I can take some action here. Let's type C out access denied. And endler. Uh, so this condition will, this if statement will execute, um, the, it will execute the contents of, uh, it will execute the code you type between the curly brackets, however, however many lines you have here, if this condition is true. And this if statement here will only execute the code between the curly brackets if its condition is false. Well, if its condition is also true, I should say, because um, if the input is not equal to the password, then input not equals password is true. And therefore, this if statement will, um, will execute so the if statement only executes if its condition evaluates to true. This is true if the input and password are equal. This is true if they are not equal. And by the way, we're going to see um, a nicer way to handle this situation 
where you want to pick between two alternatives, probably in the next tutorial, but for the moment, we'll just work with a basic if. So let's, let's run this program and see it working. So I'm gonna click run, I've already compiled it. I'll click in the console here and let's type some garbage, hit return and it says access denied. Let's run it again and I'm gonna type this time hello. I hit return and it says password accepted. Um, so that, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, you can also use ifs with integers. It works well with integers as well in exactly the same way. Um, and if, if you want to practice this, I'd uh, recommend that you try typing out a similar program to this, uh, something a little bit different if you like, or else the same program. Try to type it out just kind of um, without looking at this code, unless you actually have to because you can't remember stuff, but try to look at this as little as possible and try to get this program working. And also try to do this with an integer. You don't have to uh, use if on input that's actually been entered. You can use it on uh, the values of variables that you've hard coded in your program. Uh, so I don't have to get, for example, the input from the user. Here, I could have just assigned it a value with an equal sign. So, so try to get this program working and try this with integers as well. Make up a little program that uses at least one if statement using integers and see how you get on. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial and um, in the next one we'll probably look at if else and we'll look at uh, some more stuff with conditions. So join me again next time and until then, happy coding.